final match of Coronation Day number three. It is Backstabs versus T-Bone. Rumham Rainey, walk us through these decks. And I guess, since you guys are on opposite sides, give us an argument for why one's going to win over the other. So Backstab, I think, has some very great Royal Giant decks that he is playing. One thing that you need to really, really be careful of is the fact that Backstab is running Furnace, and that could potentially be a very big wrench in the system for T-Bone's Lava Hound deck. Not only based on the fact that he has a building to attract the Lava Hound in a different direction, but for the fact that Fire Spirits are chumpy cards and the Inferno Dragon is going to have a lot of problems getting past. And he has Skeleton Army on top of that, so I think Backstab X has a good deck matchup in that sense plus royal giant gets very good consistent damage on towers and i think the safer choice is to always go with the royal yeah. giant i think case. the inferno dragon's gonna have a really good matchup against both of those royal giants the real catch is of course can he win with an expo against double royal giant i would say no but my boy t-bone has already beaten naruto uzumaki in the round right. of eight who was running double royal giant can he do it again? Yeah. Now, okay. If you if you are these players, so I guess we'll go on the side of Backstab first. Which which deck are you bringing first? I would bring. If I was going first, I would probably bring. I would bring the, the Royal Furnace Giant deck. deck. Furnace? Yes, I would bring the Royal Giant deck. <laughs> <laughs> I would bring the Furnace deck first. Because I think Furnace is very solid in terms of a card, very safe. You can really Ooh, well, feel out. Like, okay, yep, there it is. Wow, I think it's play. perfect. It's perfect for scouting because it's a very safe drop. If they dropped an Expo, for example, you would not die instantly. Mm. Tebow's opening with his lovely old Lava Hound deck. I think uh, I would have maybe opened with the Expo deck and just tried to play an Expo right off the bat and hoping my opponent doesn't have the Royal Giant. Steal that Expo game as soon as you can. Ooh, Lava Hound taken up for the Inferno Dragon. Now notice that the Royal Giant got three shots and he's 300 health down. That's already kind of, despite the fact that the, that the Inferno Dragon was played, means that the defense was not necessarily as solid as T-Bone would have liked, but on the counterattack, T-Bone did a similar amount of damage, so they're pretty even. Yeah. Now, Musketeer is low enough health that it will not threaten the tower. Uh, the tower will sh shoot it from a little bit longer range than the Musketeer's gun. Take it right The out. Musketeer readies the shot and then yeah. dies before it can finish. Interesting fact, if you have any kind of slower speed up for the tower slowing down or the Musketeer speeding up, the Musketeer will finish the shot. That's a very good point. That was used to be one of the best little lingering effects of poisons, that little tiny bit of slow would affect it. Ooh, wow! The Royal Giant has such a long range and targets buildings that he was able to shoot that tombstone from the river. Uh-oh, Lava Hound is not protecting the Inferno Dragon, but I don't know. There's a big lightning, and that Royal Giant is going to go to town. Big question is, now you have six Elixir down. How do you stop this Lava Hound push? You need to place your Mega Minion smartly so that it doesn't get taken out by the other Mega Minion. This Skeleton Army might be the card of choice. Arrows is going to wipe it out. Arrows. Yeah, so he has arrows there. So if he can just let the, the use arrow right as those Lava Pups come out, maybe that's why he felt really comfortable. Or, yeah, there it is. I mean, maybe that's why he felt comfortable kind of ignoring it is because he had the ace in the pocket in order to uh, take that thing out. Still, fairly even trade, but in favor of T-Bone just a little bit. He's beginning to run away with it, and T-Bone, I mean, Backstab had to split up his damage on each of the towers, and you can see, take that difference in, in, in numbers, and it would be an even game, but <laughs> no focus fire from Backstab. There is an aggressive Royal Giant drop, and Inferno Dragon is going to be the card to assist. Best start. So there was two key things. The best time to drop the Royal Giants when your opponent just committed seven elixir in the air. Great opportunity. The one Fire Spirit jumped and did just enough damage to the Inferno Dragon. The Inferno Dragon took it down. I believe that. In I'm so incompetent now with my numbers after the Fireball thing, but I think that the Lightning does 937 and the Inferno Dragon has 950 hit points. So just that little sliver, wow. any amount of damage would be enough to take out the Inferno Dragon. Game is coming down to the wire, but Lightning is on both players' hands. I actually think that playing the Furnace there, unless he's trying to find a health buffer to bait the, bait the Lightning Strikes out, is going to be... Uh, lightning. lightning now. Lightning I now. think he needs to do it. Help. Lightning now. What do you he's got the Elixir. Oh! Yeah, okay. tough. Actually, uh, Backstab was one step ahead. He was yes. already at lethal with Lightning, right. whereas uh, T-Bone had, had, to, do, had yes. to do two. And so when you're in that situation, you know that your opponent, as long as you set up a good enough defense, has to cycle to the Lightning. So you play cards that make it as difficult as possible for him to get any kind of swinging damage. You saw T-Bone tried to go in with a minor yeah. to get that one swing yep. to change the tide of the match, but stopped by the Musketeer, which is not usually the best answer for a minor, but yep. 
If I he, also think, though, he had to cycle. I don't think he actually had the lightning in yes. hand. But even though he had six, he's going, ah, I don't, like, ah, so do I play? So, close. so he has to spend four, which is not the cheapest card in your deck, right? To get out there and had to wait those painstaking few extra seconds to get back up to six and then lightning for the win. Nice. Looking looking at the miner though, if you put a, if you if you place him right next to your opponent's tower and he pops up and yeah, that's the closest thing to him, how does his targeting work? Like why did the musketeer distract him? Because it looked like he was just as close to the tower as the musketeer. So typically troops will prioritize other troops oh. instead of the tower. If they're both right next to each other and have not acquired a target, typically the troop will take precedence, even to the point where there if the troop is a little far away, your, the attacking troop will actually take a few steps towards the unit and attack it. Wow. So it's actually pretty lenient. Okay, yeah, and that's something that's... The it's, more you know. It's good for all troops in the game, because obviously you want your attacking troops to hit things. Mine are sort of one of those few exceptions where you're really playing it to hit the tower and not other troops, usually. Gotcha. Right, okay. So talk a little bit about switching lanes and deciding when to switch when you already have some advantage on one tower. That was really tough. I think he saw a good opening. The pro Okay, so Lava Hound was coming down the left lane, and he played Royal Giant going down the right lane. The reason why he did, he switched lanes there was because the last time he played Royal Giant under the Lava Hound, what ended up happening was T-Bone put an Inferno Dragon behind the Lava Hound, mm -hmm. did very good matchup, and ended up killing the, uh, the Royal Giant, but then it's being tanked by the Lava Hound. Uh, by splitting it up, you're forcing the Lava Hound to be pretty much undefended yeah. down the other lane and becomes significantly less of a threat. Okay. It's the combination of the two, the synergy between the two cards that make them all the better. I don't think he expected that to come down. Oh, wow. Whoa. A lot of skeletons just got killed so by those arrows. So much elixir. That's an interesting choice. I'm not sure why T-Bone would want to minor the tombstone of all things, but he knows something that we don't. Royal Giant played in exchange for the Lava Hound, and we see the situation where the Lava Hound will actually protect cards played behind it, an interaction that gets very complicated to push past, and Definitely think that the strategy to go here for backstab is to separate the two. There we see it. Mega Beanie gets dropped, but it cannot be dropped further oh, than the river. Oh, wow, he missed the Inferno Dragon. Oops, indeed. Okay, two things. The reason why the uh, Tombstone is so far up is to pull that Lava Hound over. You saw that Zap. The Zap was meant to target the uh, Inferno Dragon and reset his, his heated up shot. But those can be a little tricky to catch because what you do is you're not actually targeting where the sprite is, you're targeting where the shadow is. Yes. Air units always look a little like they're oh, one really? tile off. The it's shadow like fish on the water. Right. The shadow on the ground is where they truly are oh, okay. on the grid. Whenever I try to lightning fish in water, it's always tough. <laughs> yeah. You just kill every single thing in the lake. <laughs> I, just, I was like, dang it. <laughs> Fishing game, I'm sorry. So here we go. Triple legendary there on T-Bone's deck where Backstab is playing a much more modest and uh, free-to-play accessible deck there with just a log in it. Hey, remember when people were really upset about opening log? <laughs> log used to not be so good and people were like, oh, I got my first legendary, but it's a log. Uh -huh. Now oh. log is one of the most played cards. He did it again! Yeah, he oh, zapped the tower yeah. a second time. Oops, <laughs> fish in the water. Backstab, it's you're better than this. Yeah, it's a little bit of a greedy play as well. You know that, okay, it's, what, 60 damage on the tower if you zap it? You can make those small optimizations, but at what cost, right? Yeah. I think that just goes to experience. Backstab is a very good player, but who has experience playing consistently against Inferno Dragon? Not a super popular card, and uh, I think it just, you know, if you don't have those practices, it's easy to make one or two tile mistakes. Oh. Those pups go. You did it a third time! Oh, wow. Oh. I think Backstab might be on tilt right here. On tilt is a good way to put it. Gonna be one and one in three seconds here. Man, what a tough one to lose. There it is, T-Bone tying it up one to one against Backstab. Again, one of these two players we moving on to the finals, playing for $2,000 and the chance to move on to the arena battles. Good news, well hey, good news for old Rummy Hammy that T-Bone takes a game and goes to a critical game three, but better news for Backstab, Inferno Dragon is out, out of the match. Right. Already won, yeah. you don't have to worry about trying to aim pesky zaps on yeah. shadowed air units. Yeah. Done. Done. What's his strategy Breeze. now? Well, let's see, T-Bone here is rocking. I thought you had like a list of his strategy. Uh, yeah. He was like, here. sends, well, actually, <laughs> sends you. Here's where T-Bone is in trouble because we're looking at an expo deck for his second deck and Backstab is running double Royal Giant. So T-Bone has an uphill oh, battle, okay. got a win okay. with an Expo. He's put it off, he's played Lava Hound games one and two, hoping to put off the inevitable, but now he's gotta face the music mm. and yes. try to somehow shoot down a tower. Rainy, when talking about Inferno Dragon and Inferno Tower, when do you want to, if you have like a Zap or a Lightning or a way to stop that damage so it kind of has to revamp, 
does it matter when you, is there like a, a, a beautiful time to do yes. it? Is it right in the beginning? Is it like, you know, what, what's that yes. magic number? It's definitely in the middle before it charges up to the critical zones, right? Because it does like 30 damage a tick and it goes up There's incrementally. Is there a max? There is a max. I yeah. think the Inferno Dragon's max is like 355. It's crazy. Something like that. Inferno Dragon is, or, I mean, Inferno Tower is somewhere in the thousands. Is that right? It's uh, it's, it's confusing as it's DPS versus damage. I oh, believe yeah, you're right. the max of an Inferno Dragon does 350 damage per shot, but so it's every crazy. 0.4 yeah. seconds. Yeah. So it gets pretty, it takes about four, four and a half seconds though to warm up to that point. And of course that, starts all over if you zap it. But of course, <laughs> hey, backstab, you gotta hit them zaps. Zaps actually gotta hit the card. Yeah. <laughs> to put it into perspective, made up numbers, right? The Inferno Tower, for example, will do, and the dynamic is the same, the Inferno Tower will do to a giant maybe half its health in the first kind of five seconds, and then the second half of its health <laughs> in like one second, okay. right? So you want to zap it before it gets to the point where it's the second half of the health. Right? Zapping, a lot zapping too soon actually is not a... It's no, it's, it's not terrible, but it's not optimal, okay. right? And of yes. course, when these games are coming down to just 100 points or so... <laughs> you between, want optimal. Right. <laughs> Backstab playing very, very cautious. I like how Backstab is not committing a Royal Giant to the board. He knows that he doesn't need Royal Giant to attack. T-Bone needs the Expo to win the game. He's played Skeleton Army and uh, Archer, splitting them in both lanes to sort of force T-Bone to go one way or the other here. Good play. Ooh, there it is. The log actually betrayed him. <laughs> the log knocked the royal giant out of Inferno Tower range, and now he can just oh, shoot no from outside the range. There. No way. Still a great opportunity to drop an expo for what it's worth, maybe in the left lane. The fact that one guard was alive mitigated a lot of the mistake that T Bone had, but still, this royal giant is going to the town. Look at that. Oh, it's so Boink. slow. Gets one more. <laughs> Only about, what was that, 159 damage a shot? I was trying to do the math. I think he had 1690 and went down to 1531. So it's actually not as powerful per shot, but the huge hit point pool of the Royal Giant means that if you don't have an answer for it, it just takes off. It's actually a lot like Expo in that way. That Expo, you can get it down to half or a third health, but then still get it's a still chunk gonna, your tower. It's still alive. And we see here the challenge of the Expo. I mean, look at that. The Both six cost cards paired up against each other. Royal Giant swaggers away with 60% yeah, or more over, health. Over half yeah, health. it looks like 70% health. So even if this even if this Inferno Tower takes it here, at what cost? He just spent 11 elixir. I don't know if he even needed to play, for example, that Mega Minion. He could have just let it let, time let, out. Yeah. yeah. Trying to fireball the tower. I don't know if that hit, actually. The Inferno Tower is now off the board. Maybe that's why he was so anxious to kill it. Oh, because there's already another one. He's probably so anxious to kill it because, of course, he wants to uh, be able to free up the, the Royal Giant to attack. I don't know if... I don't make the same mistake, though, that your clanmate did and get too aggressive with those Royal Giants because it only takes one expo to take down a whole tower, yeah. whereas I don't think Royal Giant has that level of offensive upside. I think Backstab feels safe because he has Tombstone Skull. That's a very good point. Tombstone sort of covering the six. Yeah, and he's just gonna keep cycling and positioning back and forth between those two spots because that's the hardest to spell and gain, gain value as well. See that fireball now committed to the tower rather than the tombstone, which means that Backstab probably is just gonna have that tombstone up for all of eternity. The tombstone, uh, I'm sorry, uh, T-Bone's actually not too far behind. It's only a couple hundred uh, points of damage there, mostly because he's been able to just slam value fireball. Oh, he did it again! Oh. Now it's T-Bone's turn to make fatal errors. Oh, actually, and no, I'm sorry. He's still loosely in range, just barely. Oh, that Ice Spirit, the two seconds freeze allowed the, uh, allowed the Inferno Tower to warm up there. Yeah, it's a very precarious situation. Actually, the Skeletons are tanking up for the Mega Minion, and it's going to get in there and do a lot of damage to the Ice Golem. And the Skeletons get slowed up. There is a crossbow being placed defensively, trying to clear away the Tombstones. Two Tombstones, yeah. And the Royal Giant will have to come deep into enemy territory to take down that crossbow. But there's no reason that Backstab needs to be attacking it anyways, because that Expo is not going to be in range of anything valuable. He's in triple fireball range, I believe, or at worst, just add a log or a zap. So at this point, the gameplay is do not let Expo beat you. Yes. Or even two Expo. Okay, <laughs> so or having your opponent play two. Royal Giant's kind of bossing both of them, though, to be honest. He's going to take this one out by the river just as the other one sort of times out. And that's really all Backstab needs to do. You only need to take down the Expo that is in range of your tower. And he just wants to stay as close to 10 Elixir as humanly possible while dropping ground-based units to soak. He's one Elixir away now from getting out another Royal oh, Giant. Oh, wow, that was cool. He was on the cycle. You could tell that he was looking at and really, really wanted to get the right card in there. <laughs> Yeah, he had the zap too, so that would have been a saving grace. 
The nice part is this is going to force T-Bone to spend some elixir there to stop the, the punishing Royal Giant, and that slows down T-Bone's ability to continually set up Expos, giving Backstab a break to set up another Tombstone. Backstab looks like he's got this. Good One more Fireball. Game. Six Elixirs, so all he has to do is maybe put another Tombstone down, Archers, anything like that, and then Fireball for the victory. Oh, Ops to go. That's just pretty smart, actually. Ops to go with the Royal Giant just to prevent... Just in case. Yeah, prevent any yep. scary extra from coming down. There you have it. Backstab picking up the second victory, Yay. winning with both of his decks, and moving on as our first finalist of Coronation Day number four. Congratulations, Backstab. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I love I love Royal Giant. I mean, I remember, and Rainy remembers because this is this is how long we've been casting together. That when Royal Giant came out, <laughs> it was hands down the worst card in the really? game at its oh, release. Absolutely, man. it was part of. Yeah, let's watch the replay so we can we can talk about <laughs> it. Later. Let's talk with the Royal Giant. Here's a replay of said card. Royal Giant doing a lot of work for Backstab X. All the lightning. This. <laughs> I mean, the, the fact that, so the first time he actually did this play twice. One of them he lightning without the ability, without the assistance of the furnace. The second time that one fire spirit changes the dyna dynamic of the push. The last health point is always the one that counts. Yep. The existence of that Inferno Dragon compared to not. The biggest difference. There is that knockback in the log there. Yep. And then what happens here is just out of range. Royal Giant outranges every defensive tower in the game, save Mortar and Expo, the, the siege buildings. So uh, being able to be knocked back out of the range of the Inferno Tower and just shoot it from far away was critical. That's five elixir that uh, was spent and didn't do anything at that point. Ooh, talk a little bit more about that log Royal Giant mistake. How do you see something like that coming? It's such a little thing, but it, it really kind of... It's, in there. I, it's a kind of new interaction because Log didn't use to knock back Royal Giant. That was okay. something that happened at the last game update, the last patch to, to the game. Mm. So with Royal Giant also being kind of a new addition to the uh, to the meta game because right. of all of the Expo decks, it's possible there's just not a lot of experience. I'm like, okay, I need to Inferno Tower, but oh no, there's Skeleton Army. I actually like how Backstab put him in a bad position. Skeleton Army's coming. You have to log the Skeleton log Army, it. but to do so is going to knock back the Royal Giant, hopefully safely out of range. Whew. Mind games indeed. Let's go ahead now and pull up the bracket as we now have one of our finalists. That is going to be moving on. It's Backstab. Now, up next, Brian RT versus Mango. Now, I am rooting for Brian RT to take the whole thing, uh, but in this just matchup alone between Brian RT and Mango, who is the player to watch? Who is the one that you guys think is going to take this? I think that just purely from a known player standpoint, I would go with Brian RT, but Mango has been... I mean, he defeated Marcel P. Yeah, and he right? made it here. No joke. Yeah. Well, it was no joke. Look at their decks. You yeah. want to see what's going on there. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a...